Good day, friends. We are back into the shop. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, I don't have Bowling Thunder with me. There's, uh, it's, it's down on the bench. I have to do some wiring, and uh, everything's moving right now. I've got too much going on. Too many irons in the fire. Um, I'm gonna write a song about that someday. But I do have some whiskey. Now I, I would like to say that. I had to go out and get another can because the first can was so good. This is the black bourbon, uh, uh, blended bourbon whiskey mellowed in coffee beans. Tastes like crap straight up, but you mix it with a little Pepsi and it's amazing. But I want to show you this. These are coffee beans that I put in some regular bourbon. The still house is about $26 for a fifth. Uh, this is just straight up old Jim Beam, $27, $28 for a half gallon. Oh my. Wow. Here, I wish you had some smell of vision but that smells like fresh coffee. That is no joke. And this is not a liqueur. This is still whiskey. It is, it is still, you know, 35% alcohol or whatever. We'll pour a little of that out. Look at the color. Hang on, let me get it up here so you can see that. That is dark. That is very dark. I'm gonna have to get some Pepsi and make myself a drink. Stand by. Okay, uh, we have a somewhat clean table. I have been organizing all kinds of good stuff. Just the things I find. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Here, like this. Does anybody know what that is? It's glass. It looks like a light pipe. And that's the indicator that goes in your instrument panel and it goes down somewhere and that's the other end of it that end of that light pipe the light shines in there carries out and illuminates this little button and you have a light I can't remember what that goes to I'll think of it one of these days it goes to an old car I just couldn't tell you which one Okay, we'll get some Pepsi going here. Get that ready. Um, I want to take a little sip out of this. It, it smells legit like coffee. Oh. Oh my God. That tastes horrible. That tastes worse than this. So I hate to burn this. I have some Jim Beam. I'm wondering if I should mix it 50-50, but I can do another one of these. And I will tell you, I'm going to lay these out on a piece of parchment paper and maybe put them in the oven and put it on 200, dry these beans out, and then make coffee with these beans. And we'll see if they turn out being bourbon beans. They definitely smell good. They smell good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that out. All right, so maybe just a little bit. I brought my short cup today. So let's see what we can do with oh, just a half a shot. God, I don't want to waste any of it. It smells so wonderful. It tastes like shit, though, I will tell you. It tastes terrible. But we'll mix a little bit of Pepsi into this. Figure out a ratio. I think I'm going to need a little more. Uh, that should be... I should take six ounces. Is that a can of Pepsi? Is that 12 ounces? I don't know. Let's get a sip. Just bringing it in. Just the breathing it. Kind of chokes you up a little bit. That, that tastes like coffee. You can breathe it in through your mouth and get it on the back. It is crazy amazing. Yeah, that is good. I would suggest doing that. Um, 
I don't know what this is. Is that for parsley or something? Somebody knows. Uh, put the cap on it. Uh, well, fill it full of beans. Put the cap on it. And then pour whiskey. It'll go right down in the hole. Pour you some whiskey in that hole. Fill that thing up. Let it set for two weeks. And you are ready to rock and roll, my friend. Because that makes a wonderful drink. That, in my opinion, is better than spending... $26 on this. And I'm not saying that this is not worth it. Still House is by far my favorite that I found a couple years ago in Oklahoma City. If you haven't heard the Oklahoma City story, uh, you might be able to flip through and find it if I haven't taken it off. But that's a hell of a story. But uh, that was just regular straight up Still House. And this is the black bourbon. And it is super good. Super, super good. And... Uh, well deserved because it, it's been busy. We, uh, gosh, what did we have to do? We worked on that uh, 54 some more. I had to paint the speedometer housing, and there's a muffler back there for it. And then this, I'll call it a 351 Celine. It's a it's a 351 Windsor and a Celine Mustang. Um, I've got a clean it up. It, it's kind of a mess. We relocated the battery to the trunk. Um, new starter solenoid, flush the radiator and the cooling system. I don't know what else, but there's a lot of wiring to be done. But the, the, the battery in the trunk is a big deal. Um, that's got to be done with exceptional care. And then a master shutoff back there. So, yeah, distributor. We put a distributor in it. My favorite, my pro comp. I've got another one around here somewhere. But And then cleaning this place up. Uh, we're going to look at a 1958 or 59 Packard tomorrow. Um, that's going to be for us. Uh, the engine and transmission's laying out of it, but that's not a problem. Um, it's, a, it's a Studebaker. It should be a Studebaker because that was when... Packard and Studebaker merged in together, and um, Studebaker bought Packard. So Packard shut down completely. That was the big factory you see on uh, the History Channel in Detroit that was like a half a mile long. It was enormous. Uh, largest manufacturing plant, automobile manufacturing plant in the United States. I'm not going to say in the world because I, I don't know. I would second guess that. Uh, it, it's an enormous building. I don't know if it's still standing or not. I think it is. The facility's still there. But Studebaker moved all that shit to um, Canada, and they built them up there. I think not long ago they built another round of Studebakers, but they're not, they were never really popular. Um, but they were good vehicles. The guy that... Uh, Later on in the years, I think 40, 40 or 50 some, he snuck over from uh, Cadillac and stole the prints or bought the prints, I don't know, for the engine. And that's what the Studebakers used for engines from then on out, I think. But anyway, this is going to be an interesting, uh, interesting journey. We're going to drive down by Columbia, Missouri tomorrow morning. Um... I think we're just going to take the Jeep because it's a Jeep guy. And if he likes what he sees, you know, we get talking Jeeps. Maybe we can do the good old buddy thing and um, work him down a little bit on the price. The only problem I have with the cars is the four-door. I'm not a fan of four-door cars. But, uh, hell, I still have to do get this Studebaker truck running. Too many irons in the fire, like I said. But again, um, yeah, bourbon bean whiskey or coffee bean whiskey. I don't know which, but Stillhouse was really the first ones I saw that had that. And I tried it and loved it. And now I've made my own. And I am super stoked, super stoked. Um... So if you like your whiskey, and you like your bourbon, and you like your coffee, highly recommend it. And I'll let you know how these beans turn out. 
I might drink the rest of this tonight because it's just that good. Um, but the beans have to dry before I can grind them up and put them in the filter and make coffee out of them. But I'll keep you posted. And I promise I will work my way back down to the man cave and get those water wires soldered on and, uh, and give that lap steel a, a little test run. But uh, for now, um, have a great evening. And, and when you get a chance, clean your shop. You find all this neat stuff. Okay. Brand new spark plug. Don't know where it came from. Look at this. Shout out, uh, Gibby Gibson. Uh, rest in peace, gambler guy. He's the one that started it off. If you don't know about it, look it up. Yeah, it's a funny read. And uh, they're all out. Well, the Kansas folks are out there by Dodge City this weekend doing a, doing a run around. But that's, I got too much stuff going on to go out there and mess with that. So I'll just get caught up here. And get all this stuff ironed out and finish my little guitar project and um, probably end up driving down to Roachport, Missouri tomorrow with the rollback after returning from there with the Jeep and pick up a car. But I'll, I'll keep you posted on that too. That's going to be an exciting project. Um, I'll shoot a little video on that because that's not a car that you're going to probably ever see. I've never seen one in my life. It's kind of like this. Uh, we worked on a 69, 70 RX, XR7 Cougar, um, and I found one down in Columbia. It was actually, I might have been Roachport too. It might be the same guy. I don't know. He had one. It was a 1970, and it was a convertible uh, XR7. And I showed Dad the picture. He says, I've never seen a convertible before. So some things you just got to get a hold of because you know you'll never see them again. Don't let those things pass you by. Have a great week, weekend. It's Friday. Cheers.